Alright guys, I did something crazy today. Uh, basically what happened was is that two days ago, my 4K monitor that I've always used as my PC monitor broke. And I started doing some research because my thought back in the day was I never wanted to get a PC monitor again until it had all the features I wanted, you know, without having to compromise on anything and be not at an outrageous price. So I started doing some research. The best monitor that I can find were two monitors. One that cost $3,000 and one that cost $1,000. The $1,000 one, I don't remember if it was from Acer or Asus, but uh, it's one of their latest monitors. It's hard to find right now, but basically it had most of the stuff that I wanted. It had HDR support, but it only had HDR 600, uh, which is not like, it's barely considered uh, HDR because it only had 16 zones to actually be able to control you know, HDR, if you guys know what that's about. So when I looked at that, and then I saw it was 4K, of course, it wasn't OLED or mini LED or anything. It was just a regular LCD panel. It was using IPS, so the colors were okay, the blacks were okay, just like we're all used to with monitors. But it had all the gaming features. It had 144 hertz. Uh, you know, it had the HDR that was an improvement because I didn't have HDR before, which is one of the main things I wanted. The next time I replaced a monitor, I wanted HDR. That was like my main thing. So. I found that one, and then I saw the $3,000 one, which brings in HDR 1400, which then gives you an excellent experience in PC for HDR, but it cost $3,000. It was mini LED, which does give it a boost in colors, a boost to the black levels, a boost to HDR. It had NVIDIA G-Sync, which of course I needed. It even had NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate, which is nice, um, but it was $3,000. That's insane for a 32-inch monitor, because that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be a 32-inch monitor. So I kept digging and I saw a lot of people started using a monitor with this TV behind me. It's a 48 inch LG C1 as you guys know by looking at the title of this video. And I started thinking, I was like, can I make a 48 inch TV work as a monitor? I mean, this thing is huge, but on specs alone, this thing hits every spec that I would want in a monitor and probably most gamers out there would want, except for the fact that you've got to get used to the humongous size that you're looking at. because. It's OLED, which is impossible to get in a monitor at all uh, w when it comes to regular monitors, which means that you're going to get better accurate colors, really good blacks, crazy HDR performance, uh, even better than that than the $3,000 one that I just talked about. Um, you still have 120 hertz. You still have NVIDIA G-Sync, not G NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate, but NVIDIA G-Sync compatible regardless. Um, and... Like, that's basically what my dream monitor is. I mean, if they put this in a 32-inch size, this is what I would have bought. Um, but they don't. Even the $3,000 one, the HDR performance does not match up. The color accuracy doesn't match up. The black accuracy doesn't match up to an OLED where this screen does. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a gamble. I'm going to go ahead and get this screen here. And we're going to try to use a 48-inch. I went to Best Buy, picked it up, and I was like, if I don't like it, I could return it. Well, after a few days of using this on every game with a keyboard with controller games and all that stuff i want to tell you guys first i'm going to show you guys some gameplay so you guys can see what the monitor actually looks like while playing games and then i'll give you guys my final thoughts on how i actually think this monitor did and if it could work for you guys as a monitor for your pc let's go ahead and get into the video gaming tech eating brekkie is the gaming tech going for a brekkie is the gaming tech gaming tech is the gaming tech gaming techie all right, guys, so one of the first things I wanted to talk about here uh, for using a screen like this, you can see here on my PC, uh, we know that OLED sometimes has some issues with burn-in, uh, even though this TV hasn't been out obviously long enough for it to, you know, show up anywhere and people haven't really talked about it, but it's something that's possible. So there are a few things you could do on your PC to kind of rectify the issue uh, a little bit to, to take more care of it and stuff like that, which is what I did. Um, and it's a really cool feature anyway. There's something on Steam called Wallpaper Engine. Uh, it kind of runs in the background. It costs four dollars on Steam. Well worth it. And basically, what happens is, is it takes over your wallpaper, and you can actually add wallpaper that moves. Uh, so there's no static image on the actual screen here, and it's always moving. This icon should actually not be here. Um, and you could actually move it, and I can change the wallpaper to the next one that I have set up. Um, if you go down to the corner here, you can just hit next wallpaper and some of the wallpapers that I already have selected. This one actually has music too. So even though I have it turned off currently, it does have music and stuff that's playing in the background. Uh, and you can see that this one's obviously Halo. One that I really, really like, uh, looks like this. This one here I really, really like. 
uh, just because I'm a big retro fan, of course. We got the little Nickelodeon sign, that nice little retro TV that's moving. We got some sound effects on the window. Like I said, I have the music turned down for copyright things, but there are some things in there. So it just makes the wallpaper alive, so it's always changing. And basically every hour I have the wallpaper change. So not only is this always moving in this corner, but the wallpaper every hour changes, so it's never the same image that stays. So the only way you're really going to have issues with burn-in from everything I've done with research is if you have the same image on your screen for hours at a time every day, consistently every day. So considering that I play different games all the time on the PC and stuff like that, and I'm always doing it, it's probably never going to be an issue because I always have that you know, changing, and I'm actually going to get rid of the recycle bin icon too as well i had the, the start menu hidden so it only pops up when i actually show it so just some things that you can actually do to alleviate the problem a little bit but again if you're always playing something new like even if you kept all your icons on your desktop in the recycle bin even if you left that there for an hour but then you go play call of duty or you go play battlefield and then you come back and you're always rotating through games which is what i do never gonna uh, be an issue because it's only when you have it on the screen for upon hours and hours every day for days at a time. It's not like, oh, I left it on for an hour, so that's a problem. It's literally like 10 hours a day for like days, like, you know, days straight. And even then, it may not happen, but it could. So, anyway, that's my little spiel about how, how I have it set up. So let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay on stuff. We're going to go ahead and show you how good the screen can look uh, and how good it is to play games. So I want to show you a couple of games with the keyboard and a couple of games with the actual um, controller just to show you guys how these games actually look here. So you can see the HDR symbol comes on, which is cool. And here is the remote control of the TV. You can actually press the settings icon, and I already have game mode turned on with this TV. So you can see here, you can you, you can see the FPS that it's running at. You can see the stabilizer, the latency is on, and VIR, VRR is on, which is obviously uh, G-Sync, uh, basically. And basically, if you open up Game Optimizer here, you get the full list of settings that you can set up. So you can see here, you can turn Game Optimizer on and off. Of course, I would never turn that off. Uh, you can set the genre. They have a couple of genres that you can select. So you, so it kind of adjusts the brightness and a little bit of the colors, depending on what genre you're using. I usually just leave it at standard. Um, but you could change it to FPS if you're playing FPS stuff. And then if you come down here, you can do the blue light if you want to make to, you know help you better with your eyes if you want. Um, you can prevent input lag. There's standard, which is already amazingly really, really good, but you could even boost it if you want, but it kind of alters the image a little bit, so I just leave it on standard. I don't have any issues with input lag at all. Like, nothing that I noticed. This TV is outstanding when it comes to input lag. And then uh, there's the VIR and G-Sync, which I do have turned on, so this does have a comp compatibility with G-Sync, which basically means that, uh, you know, you shouldn't have any screen tearing or anything like that. But remember, this does not have an actual module for G-Sync, so it's not G-Sync Ultimate. It's G-Sync compatible. So G-Sync and VIR really kicks in, usually between, between 48 FPS and 120 Hertz, which is what this monitor has. So if you dip below 48, uh, it, it kind of doesn't use G-Sync anymore. It kind of relies on other technology to help reduce the... Um, screen tearing and stuff but g-sync particularly only works between 48 fps and to the monitor's refresh rate which is 120 at this point it does have free sync as well but we have using nvidia graphics card so we don't have that turned on um but yeah that that's kind of what you have for your game settings there and you can easily when you pop it up just look at this and immediately tell what's turned on and what isn't um so we can go ahead and get out of here now if we go ahead and go into vanguard here and you guys uh Obviously, keep in mind, I'm doing my best to show you guys how good this game can look on a PC uh, with this mo with this monitor slash TV that I'm using. But, of course, I'm filming this at 4K. I'm filming this in HDR uh, on my camera. But, you know, it's always going to look better in person. So you got to keep that in mind, of course. So here we are at the main screen. Let me just show you guys that everything is maxed out. I'm running a 3080 graphics card. You can see here there's the monitor, the LG TV. Uh, you can see the refresh rate is set to 120 hertz. This is running through an HDMI cable. So just make sure you have a good uh, HDMI cable because the first one I used was complete garbage and didn't work well. Just make sure you get a good HDMI cable to use. Uh, V-Sync is off because I have V-Sync turned on in the in the NVIDIA control panel instead, which is how you should set up G-Sync. So it's off on here. Um, you can see HDR is turned on. I already did the HDR calibration, of course. Uh, you can see here in the quality, everything is set to as high as it can go. Um, nothing else can go higher. Everything is fully maxed out here. Shadow, lighting, everything is turned on, as you can see here, to ultra 
as much as possible. We are using N NVIDIA DLSS, uh, which is fantastic, and I'm actually using it on quality. Technically, as you can see here, when you use DLSS and 4K, you should be using performance mode for 4K. And when you do 1440p, quality is what you use for 2K. But I wanted to see what it ran in quality just because. And it still sits usually at really high frame rates, way over 60 um, all the time. So let's go ahead and dive into some team deathmatch here just to show you guys some gameplay. And you can see here while we're searching here that I sit back more than arm's length. So you can see my arm there not hitting the screen. So if you sit back from your keyboard like this, like I do, about an arm's length and a half. So about like 30 inches away from the screen, I would say, from your eye level to where the screen is. You can still see the whole screen, and I've been getting used to this over the last couple days, and I have no issues. All right, so here we go into a game of Call of Duty here. And I know that Call of Duty always gets a lot of flack and stuff, but I really do think Vanguard looks extremely good on PC and runs extremely well. We're getting... Uh, it depends on the map. Some maps get more than others. This one currently sitting at over 60 FPS. Uh, I've seen some maps where I've gotten over 100. It kind of just depends on what's going on here. But uh, I played Modern Warfare, another one that everyone regards as looking really good from 2019. And I do think this game looks better than Modern Warfare. Uh, I love Look at those trees and stuff. They look really good flapping in the wind and stuff. Uh, now we're sitting at 80 FPS. So, like I said, it hovers anywhere from 60 to 100, uh, depending on the map and depending on what's going on. Uh, that is with DLSS quality. Uh, remember, you can change DLSS to and probably do it on performance for 4K resolution, which is what it should be on. But I decided to leave it on quality here. Um, see if we can find some people to shoot, shall we? See how we do here. But you can see how smooth everything is. No lag, no latency at all. Um, everything just looks really good. would be somebody right there next to them. Ooh, two for one there. Oh, we got that guy too who was trying to get me. All right, we're picking up the pace. That was four kills in like 15 seconds. Oh man, I could have had a fifth. He started hopping around. But yeah, I don't think you guys need to see a full entire match of this. Obviously, you guys can tell uh, how good the game looks, how well everything's running, how good the screen looks, how good the HDR looks, how good the colors look. There's a nice long shot for you. Uh, you know, things are things are looking really good in this game. And I'm having a uh, side note. I'm having a ton of fun with Vanguard as well. That was terrible. I should have died there like six times, but I'll take it. Um, I'm having a ton of fun with Vanguard. There's a lot, of, a lot more destructibility. The explosions look really good, and the graphics on PC look really good on this monitor. Or this TV, whichever way you want to call it nowadays. And, and just to show you guys, too, something I forgot to show you guys before that I should show you guys now, is um, if you go into uh, display settings, just to, just to prove it to you guys, uh, you can see that there is a use HDR function that is currently turned on on this screen. Um, I have the scaling 150, but if you go to uh, advanced display settings, you can see you get the full resolution 3840 by 2160. You can see the refresh rate is, of course, at 120. You can see it gets the full uh, bit rate of 10 bit RGB and full HDR. So it uh, works extremely well. So uh, I can't show you the story mode of Red Dead Online because I don't have it on PC. I actually bought it on console way back, uh, even though I do want to get it on PC now just because I've seen how good it looks and just replay it. But uh, I am just going to go into free roam just because I want to show you how good Red Dead Online looks uh, on this monitor with HDR and stuff. Like, it really brings, like, new life into Red Dead Redemption, either the online or the story mode. And if you haven't played it on an OLED, OLED TV in HDR with accurate blacks and colors like this, like, the game definitely comes to life on this LG, mon uh, LG TV. So here we are with Red Dead Online, and just look at how good this world looks. Like, look at these trees... Look at the, the beautiful sky here. I mean, this game has always looked good. Let, let's not forget. Like, like this game has always looked good. Uh, but this is the first time I'm playing in an HDR on a PC. Because I never had an HDR monitor before. Obviously, and now that this is kind of doing that. Like, this is just incredible on how, ga how, how good this game looks. Like, that guy, the horse. Uh, you know, 
the trees, the environment, everything just looks really, really nice. Uh, let's go stand on the edge over there real quick. Like, look at this. And not only is it running, it's also running uh, pretty well, too. I fully maxed out settings. There is Red Dead Online, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a look at how good this game can actually look here um, on this monitor and on this TV. So the last game I want to show you here is Forza Horizon 5. Uh, Forza Horizon 5, of course, just came out. Um, and this game, again, breathtaking on this screen is what I'm going to say. I mean, the game is already breathtaking no matter what you play on, but... Like I said, just playing it on a PC and actually having an HDR screen for the first time um, and having an OLED screen is just its just crazy to me. Um, I can't wait till this, for, till this keeps getting cheaper and the form factor goes down so more people who don't want a 48 inch as a monitor like my crazy ass does, they can go ahead and get their 32 inch whenever that does happen. Uh, because, But I feel like we're not going to get a 32 inch OLED HDR G-Sync display at 120 plus hertz for a long time unless if you buy a monitor like a tv like this like as far as like actual true monitors from acer and stuff like i don't know if that's gonna happen i mean the, the only comparable one currently out right now costs three thousand dollars and it's mini, mini led and it still can't produce the blacks that this screen this screen can produce and it still can't produce the hdr quality that this can produce um you know even having a even paying three thousand dollars when this one only cost me a thousand like this cost me a thousand dollars, and it's better than the monitors that Asus and Acer are selling for three grand, uh, that come close to this, but still can't even keep up. But of course, they said at the 32-inch screen size that most people want for a monitor. So you guys can see how good this game actually looks here. I have everything set to max in Forza, uh, just because I wanted to see how everything would look and how everything would run. It sits somewhere between 40 to 60. When there's a lot of trees and stuff in your area, like there is right now, it usually hovers around 40 to 50. When you're in the city and stuff, or, or in the beach area, and there's not a lot of trees, then it usually goes to 50 to 60. So it kind of depends. Sometimes even higher than 60. But of course, you can uh, change a couple of settings here. I have everything maxed out, including ray tracing and on extreme and everything. So you can just adjust a couple of settings on a 3080 and get this to be at 60. But I wanted to show everything maxed out for you guys, can you, so you guys can at least see what this display can do uh, with everything maxed out. Ran into that building pretty nice. Looks like we're coming into like the, the dusk area here. Uh, since it looks like the sun's going down. Into the water area. Look at that water, how good that water looks. So yeah, no surprise that this game looks really, really good, um, you know, on this screen. But, you know, like I said, this is my first time playing on an OLED TV in general. And now the fact that I have it as my PC monitor, where graphics are turned up even more than what an Xbox Series X would be and a PS5 would be. This is, this is kind of insane, guys. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed some gameplay on what you guys can expect. Hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an idea. Like I said, I did my best there because I'm obviously recording it. It's always going to look better in person. At least you guys saw it in 4K and in HDR being recorded. So hopefully that gives you guys a good impression. Now remember, this review of the LG C1 that I'm doing here is from a gaming perspective for me, coming from a PC perspective. So you're not going to see, you know, crazy in detail specs. You know, there's plenty of reviews that did that. For this tv screen already that's not what i do on this channel i'm coming at this from an angle of i play pc games will this work as a pc monitor for me as a gamer and that's all i really care about and i'll tell you guys right now this is the not only is this the best tv i've ever used uh because i have plenty of tvs in the house and this is the best tv i've ever used it is also the best monitor i've ever used for a pc bar none i will not go back to anything other than this from now on until a 32 inch monitor comes out with all the specs that this thing meets and maybe surpasses it in some way, God knows how many years down the future, I will never upgrade from this thing. Uh, yes, it is huge. You will have to get used to the giant size. You'll have to get used to the fact um, making sure that you can sit, like I said during the video. And yeah, I wouldn't have any issues using it like that if I was going to be sitting that close to it, uh, uh, that far away from it. 30 inches is a good amount uh, to sit away from it. But everything else, if you guys are okay with trying something crazy like I did, 48 inches as your monitor you have the space on your desk you have the arm and a half length away of 30 inches and stuff and you're ready to do this 
This is probably, uh, there's no probably, it's going to be the best PC monitor you've ever used and, and more than likely the best TV you've ever used for gaming. Now don't forget, I'm coming at this from a PC perspective, but you can also connect your PS5 and your Series X to it. It has all four ports at 2.1. HDMI and it works fantastic. I have tested that already and it supports all the features 120 Hertz on those consoles as well And it's gonna be the best experience to play gaming if you want the best TV to play your series X or your PlayStation 5 This is it right here the LG C1 get whatever size you want whether it be a 48 inch or whatever you want They have all the sizes they start at 48 best TV for those consoles PC 48 inch as long as you're okay with the size it's fantastic guys like again OLED, game changer. The black levels, the color, accuracy, the contrast, insane. Nothing like I've ever experienced before on any TV or any PC monitor. You know, having NVIDIA G-Sync, even though it's not NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate, it's still NVIDIA G-Sync with VRR. Still don't have any tearing issues at all, uh, as you guys saw there. No issues at all. It works extremely well. Um, and, you know, just like I had G-Sync on my last monitor, this one works really well, even if it's not the ultimate version that they talk about. Um, it still works fantastic regardless and I don't know um, if I need anything else but G-Sync compatible because I don't see any tearing in any of the games that I play and it works really really well and so on top of that then you have the 120 Hertz refresh rate I mean like I said it's a dream monitor for us PC gamers the only thing that LG can do to make it better is make it smaller so more PC gamers can put it on their desk but other than that I'll be using this as my primary PC monitor from now on with my games uh, the games have never looked so good on a PC and I will never go back to anything I don't know if I'll ever get any other monitor ever again until something better from the OLED side comes out because Why would you I mean it has everything you could want and for the foreseeable future and until when monitors catch up I don't even know when that will be when will we see a 32 inch OLED G-Sync, you know 120 plus Hertz monitor with all these features on the monitor side who knows so might as well get it now at 48 inches <laughs> And enjoy it as you guys see so that it that's it guys if you guys have any questions about what you guys saw in today's video as always leave it down below if not thank you guys for watching till next time